AK Abungabi. Hugh asked me to please let you know that he'll be going on a stand-up comedy tour called Outcasted with two other Chicago comedians starting in Chicago on Friday, September 29th. For future details, please follow him on Facebook or Twitter at AK Jobs. <laughs> okay. It was my first day of school in this country. My first shot, my first opportunity to make a first impression. And we all know the importance of first impressions. But I was blowing it. See, I was breaking the one cardinal rule that you can't break as a first grader, which was do not, and I repeat, do not embarrass yourself, even if your life depended on it. <laughs> Uh, see, it was, um, I just moved to this country, and before this day, I didn't know that this little stick figure with uh, the bottom being a, a triangle meant it was a girl's oh. bathroom. <laughs> so, I just followed whoever was in front of me. But luckily that day, my first grade teacher had great situational awareness and grabbed me and extracted me from uh, the mysterious unknown layer of the girl's bathroom. Uh, but unfortunately, by that point, the damage was done. And I had solidified my membership in the Weird African Kin Club for the rest of elementary school, with a membership size of one person. <laughs> See, I immigrated to the US when I was six years old. Um, and then soon after that, I became a naturalized US citizen. Um, and uh, although um, yeah, I became a naturalized US citizen after that, and I was very young and still very, very impressionable. Literally, anything and everything that happened around that time left an impression on me. And I wasn't really off to a very good start. But right after I got here, I shed my Nigerian Prince accent, and I could really blend in with all the other kids, at least when it came to speaking. But what I had to understand and comprehend, it took me a little more time to comprehend, is that I was different. I never was able to fully blend in. But would it take me much longer to understand that this was actually okay? I started to learn, especially in middle school, that we as Americans love labels. So are you black? Are you white? Or are you Asian? Or are you Nigerians or American? The rules were you could only pick one and you couldn't combine. Actually, you dare not pick one. I started actually figuring out the rigidity of this in middle school, in sixth grade. And my first encounter with this was through my middle school arch nemesis, um, Michael. <laughs> so Michael was this uh, other black kid who was cool, suave, and very athletic, and knew much more about game back when I still was figuring out what cooties were, right? Um, it was in sixth grade social studies, one day our teacher asked us, if you identify as black or African American, please raise your hand. So my hand instinctively went up. Michael, who was conveniently seated right behind me, said, hey man, you're African though, right? You ain't black. <laughs> and in that one phrase, he dismantled any feelings of black and belonging that I had and left this unsettling feeling that would last for many, many years after that. And I wish I had the confidence at the time to tell him that whether or not I was born in Nigeria or not did not take away anything from my feeling of blackness or my patriotism as an American. Now that being said, it didn't help my reputation as a black man in the U.S. that I sucked at basketball. <laughs> if there is literally one thing you're expected to be good at as a black man in this country, it's basketball. <laughs> Couple that with my first name being Abdul Kareem. <laughs> Uh, and my expectations for basketball were astronomical. And I get on the court and I airball, don't get the pass. And people were like, what the hell happened to you? See, it wasn't my fault. Uh, my parents were Nigerian immigrants as well, and they liked figure skating. But they were too cheap to put me in figure skating classes, so they put me in roller skating classes. Whenever people would ask me, hey, thank you, where are you going after school? I get all hard and be like, I'm going to practice. <laughs> when I ask them what's practice, I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> be 
people would be talking about Michael Jordan and the dunks and everything he'd be making. I'd be like, hey, did you see the triple axel in the South <laughs> That was a weird kid. It's okay. Um, but also, as a Muslim American, my issues with identity compounded after 9-11. Once again, I was back in middle school in social studies class when the attacks happened during 9-11. I still remember, as the first of the Twin Towers fell down, I, just as everyone else in the classroom, was terrified. But even more so than everyone else, I was horrified when I found out that the perpetrators of the attacks subscribed to the same religion as I did. But as I was grappling with these internal thoughts, Michael, once again, had some also comforting words to say. As we're watching the video, he said, Man, fuck these Muslims, we should bomb them. Now, in that moment, Michael did not know that I was Muslim, nor did I wish to reveal it at this particular time. <laughs> but what I wish I had was the confidence to tell him that the sentiments of the people who were committing these attacks were only the actions of a few and not the sentiments of most of the people in this faith. I wish I had the motivation to tell him that Inasmuch as they were hijacking these planes, they're also hijacking the message of a religion, as opposed to spreading the message of peace that's the forefront of this faith. But unfortunately, I was a nervous and terrified kid who chose to stay silent. For although my first name, Abdul Karim, is Arabic, no one ever assumes that I'm Muslim because I don't look Arab or South Asian. Therefore, I continue to hide through the rest of middle school and through high school. It wasn't until college until these insecurities started to fade and the artificial walls between my identity started to crumble. In college, I met other students who were like me. And no, I don't mean other black men who suck at basketball. <laughs> I meant other people who had multifaceted American identities like myself. People who were just as proud of their American identities as they were of their other identities. Well, from I met from Palestinian Americans who were as heated by LeBron James' decision to take his talents to Miami <laughs> as they were about the occupation, illegal occupation of Palestine. I met Mexican Americans who were, in one breath, critical of the illegal deportation or the deportation of uh, deportation mistreatment of Mexican uh, immigrant workers here, and in the next breath. They were rapping the lyrics to Fresh Fruits of Bel Air at the party. <laughs> These people understood something that took me much, much longer to comprehend, which was the idea that being American was never a monolith. Um, and so with this interaction, with these lessons, I myself started solidifying my own American identity from taking leadership roles in the Muslim Students Association to protesting national and international injustices, to getting up on stage and making jokes about the idiosyncrasies of growing up in America in a Nigerian American household. Now, this experience in college gave me the motivation, the confidence to own my own identity and no longer hide behind this cloak of cowardice. So whenever anyone came up to me and asked me, hey man, who are you and where are you from? I probably said, a black Nigerian American Muslim. How <laughs> simple as that? Um, but although the the, rid the insecurities from the ridicule from middle school and high school are no longer present, one never really fully escapes ridicule in life, especially from one's siblings. For example, my younger brother still likes making fun of the fact that he can be president while I can't because he was born here. <laughs> but I'm like. Look, homie, did you see Obama before and after the presidency? Uh, they say black don't crack, but it definitely does. <laughs> but as much progress as we've made during the Obama administration, I feel like we've taken so many steps back during the Trump administration. During and after the election, it really crushed me to hear stories of little kids in elementary school who their classmates would be yelling at them saying, go back to your country, even though they were born here. Um, and it, more than that, it really put me on edge to see when people 
um, on the, to see the increased rates of hate crimes against people who are minorities who just were attacked for looking different. And after seeing all of these things, I was definitely very, very afraid. And soon after that, I actually had to, I called my mom because I'm going to check up on her. As a black Muslim, um, black Muslim immigrant who's also female, she's in the category of people who have the most to lose under the Trump presidency. So as I was talking with her, I realized as I was telling her my fears and everything about Trump, she wasn't really much afraid at all. She instinctively snapped back and she said, He's an idiot. <laughs> she continued saying, I guess we'll have to put up with shenanigans for the next four years, but it's okay, things will be fine. And as I reflected upon this point, I realized that both my parents had been through so much. Um, they've been through living under totalitarian rulers, to living under war, to immigrating to the US and not having anything um, and like Drake said, started from the bottom, now they're here. <laughs> Despite all the xenophobia, homophobia, racism that they faced, they were able to face all these obstacles and still make it. So I started thinking, even though Trump's and all the things that he's doing may be difficult, you know, compared to what they've been through, things might not be so bad. And at a commencement speech that he made uh, at Stanford University in 2005, Steve Jobs said that, quote, um, uh, don't let the opinion, don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your, no, your own inner voice, end quote. In life, there will be people who will try to define your own identity and exclude you from what you have a right to. Um, exclude you from what you have a right to. Um, these people um, don't realize that America has and always will be a nation of immigrants. And these people will try to hijack your own identity. But we have to realize that we were all immigrants at some point. And realize that even though my American experience may not be the same as your American experience, we are all indeed Americans. Thank you.